Hello guys and welcome back. On our last video, we looked at the installation of Active Directory, DHCP and DNS. On this video, we are going to go ahead and set up DHCP. First, I'm going to use Packet Tracer to illustrate how DHCP works. Then we're going to go ahead and set up DHCP on our Windows Server 2012. And those that want to jump straight to Windows Server 2012, you can do so by clicking on the timestamp. We're going to go to Win7A. That's one of our virtual machines. Click on IP configurations. If you look, it's currently on static configuration. Now we're going to click to activate DHCP. And now it's requesting the IP address. Then if you look closely, it says DHCP failed. A PIPA is being used. Now, what is a PIPA? A PIPA stands for Automatic Private IP Addressing. It's a Windows feature which enables PC to self-configure an IP address and subnet mask automatically when their DHCP server isn't reachable. Now, I will configure it back to static. And close. I will do the same with the other machines just to confirm that we are not getting the DHCP address. Our DHCP server is down. As you can see, we are still getting the app addresses on both these machines. This is what our packet tracer server looks like. You know, a server can be anything from a standard desktop PC, like the picture on your right, or it could be a big rig that you'd only find in server plants, like picture you see on your left. I'm going to give you a quick run through for those that are not too familiar with uh, Packet Tracer. As you can see, on your left, there are rather adapters that you can add onto your um, server. You have to have the server off to be able to do that. That's how cool Packet Tracer is. It tries to simulate the real world you know, uh, situation. And then you can see if I switch it off, our link goes down. And if I switch it on, the link is attempting to connect. Now we have the a wireless um, interface card. So we can replace that with a wireless interface card and switch the server on. And then if we go to our In your command prompt and type IP config, you will note that we have one Ethernet adapter and a wireless connection. So that's how cool Pocket Tracer is. You can you can learn a lot from this. And um, yeah, all those um, tabs you see on the on the on the left there, those are that's the the fiber type connector. See, so you got all sorts of uh, shoppable uh, interface cards, and these are the services that the DHCP, I mean the server, offers. So you got HTTP, DHCP, uh, DHCP version six. We're not gonna touch that. You got all sorts of other services, DNS, you know, emails and and whatnot. It's it's just a, it's a, it's a very cool. A little software this so on this on this particular video we'll be concentrating on the DHCP as you can see we currently have a default DHCP uh, pool created so we're just gonna go ahead and edit it or oh, before we do that we have to set the IP address of our the of our server right remember in the previous video we did give it an ip address of uh 192.168.10.2 on our virtual box environment so we're going to do the same here on packet tracer same thing with the dns server the dns server is the same as the as the as the as the active directory server so we're going to give both the same address so it's going to look within itself for the dns services now we we'll go back to this to set the services so the dhcp 
So the default gateway, we're going to make the server itself the default gateway. And the DNS, we're going to make it the default gateway. So meaning all the PCs in our internal network, they will look outward to the server as the, the gateway. And then we're going to make our scope start from 100 and we're going to we're going to have um, 100 available uh, IP addresses. So it's going to go from 100 to 109, right? It's not going to go to, 100, to 200. It's going to go from 100 to 109 because we start counting from the 100, not the 101. We start counting from 100. So we're going to, the last IP address on the scope will be 199, sorry, 199 and not 200. It's a bit of math there, fellows. So now we're going to go back to PCA and type IP config. And we have not yet received any, any uh, uh, DCP. So something is not jiving well here. Let's see if I can figure it out. Okay, yes, I had to activate my DHCP. As you can see, it says DHCP is successful and we have a, an IP address assigned. So that is great, great stuff. So we can we can also, you know, retype IP config. I can just use an up arrow and click enter. Now you can see I do have my IP address assigned by the the DH, DHCP server so that is working we can we can we can try the same with uh, win7b configure DHCP and it automatically assigns it the second IP address in line which is 101 and uh, let's try with the Linux Ubuntu machine configure DHCP it assigns the third IP address in line so it is working accordingly everything is running smooth now i'm going to demonstrate some advantages of dhcp i have about 10 pieces of about eight pcs there and on this one on the pc7 i'm going to add a static ip address all right we'll give it an ip address of 104 and I'll go to command prompt just to confirm if indeed it's configured. So I type in IP, IP config and as you can see the, the IP address has been uh, updated. Now I'll do the same with PC6. I'll make this um, 105, right? So I keep those two IP addresses in mind. The first PC was 104, this is 105 right now i am going to duplicate these computers so this is one of the advantages of uh, dhcp is that you can centrally manage ip addresses of multiple pcs on one centralized point Okay, this switch can take only 24 computers. Uh, it's a 24 port switch. We are going to go back to PC7. It has a static IP address of 104. Now we want to give it a DHCP address. So we're going to configure DHCP and it will receive the fourth IP address in line, which is 103. And now we go to PC6 and we do the same, but something interesting happens. 
it receives 106 and the reason being that DHCP is so smart that it keeps the record of all the IP addresses that are on the network whether they are dynamic or static and it will not repopulate those IP addresses unless it is sure that they are no longer in use. PC5 same thing you can see it gets 107 so it keeps going up now we're going to try PC8 this time around let's try using command prompt I mean PC4 now you can see there's nothing happening there that means our DCP is not enabled so we go back we enable DCP and it says that it has assigned it 108 let's double check with command prompt we're just going to click up arrow enter and there it is you can see there 108 and you can also see that it's getting the default uh, gateway and now we are going to set up DHCP on our Windows Server 2012 now we are going to open server manager and we are going to select tools and then click on DHCP we are going to expand on that little server icon where it reads Win Server 2012 and we are going to expand the IPv4 option now there are a couple of features within that we are not going to go through them now however I will touch a bit on this deny allow you know filter setting here basically what happens here is that any PC that is included in that deny folder using the MAC address we, we will enter computers using MAC addresses in the deny folder and what that does is it will deny every computer that has its MAC address included in that folder. And then the allow folder will do the opposite. Every computer that is included in that folder or group will be allowed access to receive DHCP addresses. Now we are going to go to IPv4 and we're going to right click and select new scope. So we are adding a new scope. So we're going to give our scope a name. We will call it home lab scope. Okay. Uh, the description is not important. You just click next. Now we are going to give it the start IP address and the end IP address. We're going to make our start IP address 192.168.10.100. And I want us to give it at least a hundred IP addresses. So we're going to make it 192.168.200. However, note that from 100 to 200, that's 101 addresses. It's not 100, it's 101, but that's fine. That's fine. It's, it looks neat. And on this one now, we're just giving it a subnet, uh, a sort of a subnet mask right and this thing is so clever that you could enter either the length or the subnet max and it will auto correct the other one so it doesn't matter which one you edit it can always auto correct the other one so you click next and here you well we're not going to deal with this we're just going to go click next now this is the list duration period um, this is the least duration of the IP address in that scope. So what this means is that if a PC is assigned an IP address, there is a limit to the number of hours or days that that PC can keep that IP address reserved for it. So in other words, if that IP address expires, then that IP address is thrown back to the pool, right? Just like the fish, throw it back to the pool so that it can be reused by another PC later. So you can select any number of days or hours and then just click next, depending on the duration you want. And you go ahead and click next. Now, we don't really have a router, but you can just put in an IP address. Normally the router standard, people like to put in the first IP address after the network IP address, which in this our case is going to be 192.168.10.1. But we don't have a router in our virtual environment, but just going to put it there anyway. Now here we are going to add our DNS server. And if we have more than one server, we can also add those. 
you simply do, just type the IP address and click add or you can simply select the one that already exists and edit it and add it back to the list now we we are going to go with the 192.168.10.2 don't worry about the 10.10.10.1 is just there for demonstration purposes and also you can arrange the list uh, by priority the top the one at the top will be high priority and the second one will be low priority now we're not going to add any wind servers so I'm gonna click next and then click next to activate uh, the scope and then you click finish now you can see under ipv4 we have a scope and if you look if you expand that you'll see the scope it's from the from 10.100 to 10.200 now we got address list address leases We'll touch on that later when we add computers to the Active Directory. And more of these options we'll look at as time goes on. So um, there is, we have our scope edit and this DHCP is ready to start assigning IP addresses to, to computers that join the domain. Join me on the next video where we'll be adding Windows 7 and Linux computer on Active Directory.